D. James Kennedy Ministries presents Truths That Transform. Did you know that one of the greatest battles in the culture war today is over our past? Well, they are trying to define America by its birth defect of slavery and Jim Crow. And we, our counter is no individual or nation should be judged by the worst of what they used to be. The future of our nation depends on separating the facts from the fiction. We will do that on today's Truths That Transform. Welcome to Truths That Transform, a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. In recent years, there has been an ongoing effort to take control of the present by rewriting the past. American school children no longer grow up immersed in the history of the nation's settling and founding. Instead, they face a tsunami of revisionism, painting our nation's history primarily in terms of racism and oppression. On today's program, you will discover the true basis for our Constitution and see inside the attack on the guiding principles of our republic. We begin with our own Dr. Jerry Newcomb, executive director of our Providence Forum Outreach, who investigates the new war on America as founded. In recent months, we've seen around 200 statues of figures from American history toppled in various cities across the country. It began with tearing down or vandalizing statues of Robert E. Lee and Confederates, but now it has included statues of George Washington and other great American leaders. If you want to remake America, you've got to tear down belief in and the, the, the country we have now, you have to make the country we have now and the founding fathers and our institutions illegitimate. Well, I think it was Karl Marx who said that if you can take people's history away from them, you can manipulate them. A lot of people act like they're ashamed of America, ashamed of, of its past. Imperfect? Of course it is. People were involved and therefore it's imperfect because people are imperfect. Every aspect of America is being redefined in a negative way. And so because of this, uh, the progressives and people like that are trying to say, well, since everything in our past was bad, we have to junk all that, get rid of you know, the Constitution, get rid of American history, and move forward into this new utopia that they're planning with you know, socialism and equality and so forth. Students at Wisconsin want to take down the statue of Abraham Lincoln because they say he owns slaves. Well, Abraham Lincoln did not own slaves. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous, but it shows that there's this ignorance of our history that's creeping in now. They've so redefined the past as negative that they're going out of their way to find negative things that didn't even exist. To explore the battle over American history even further, we spoke with Bob Woodson, founder of the Woodson Center in Washington, D.C., a veteran of the civil rights movement who feels the movement has been hijacked recently. Recently, the city of San Francisco has voted to change the names of 44 public schools, including the names of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Abraham Lincoln. Would you say there's a war on history in, in our time? Yeah, I really think we're in a cultural war right now. And those of us who believe in traditional values, we are, we are counterculture. <laughs> When you have uh, school systems uh, around the country who have adapted the anti-political history of America's uh, 1619 project, uh, in New York Times, there were 20 black journalists who came together to author what they call the 1619 project. And they identify uh, America's founding is in 1619 and not 1776. And that was the year that blacks 20 black slaves came on the shores. And they said, because of America's history with slavery, that everything that developed from that, capitalism, 
was there for invalid. Uh, and, and, and so they have uh, unfortunately had the, uh, the support of major corporations and they have taken this um, anti-American doctrine around to public school systems in all parts of the country. And so this is just one expression of this denigration of, uh, of American values. Abraham Lincoln never owned slaves. He did everything to free them. Frederick Douglass was a slave. So the question was, so it isn't the it isn't the slave ownership that is really at the basis of their opposition to these figures. They're using that as a proxy for what they really believe. Because why are they taking down the statue of Frederick Douglass? They're, they're really attacking anybody that has as the foundation of their life Judeo-Christian values. Mm. It's really a war against faith. I have a dream. I would not be surprised if they went after Dr. King because of his Christian faith. You gotta understand this has nothing to do with race. It has everything to do with using race as, as, a, as a bludgeon to try to destroy civic institutions in America. It has nothing to do with race. They're using race and they've hijacked the civil rights movement in their quest to undermine this country's founding values. I understand one of the aspects of the 1619 Project is the idea that racism in is, is in America's DNA. It really is. It, it says that America is in its, uh, that slavery is, is a part of, it's in America's DNA. Racism, systemic racism is in our DNA, and therefore, uh, the, because the founders, half of them are slave owners, therefore the Declaration of Independence, therefore is invalid. And, and so they are trying to define America by its birth defect of slavery and Jim Crow. And we, our counter is no individual or nation should be judged by the worst of what they used to be. Bob Woodson is working with many conservative allies, including Dr. Carol Swain, retired law professor from Vanderbilt, to counteract the lies of the 1619 Project. It's very problematic because a lot of our young people are being taught that America is an evil country. It's an oppressive country, and that is not true American history. What is remarkable is that America had an Emancipation Proclamation and if you look at the history of America, there have been plenty of mistakes made, but throughout it all, there were people trying to correct those mistakes. Yeah, there are all kinds of historical inaccuracies. We uh, at the Woodson Center uh, organized uh, 23 plus scholars and activists to confront this uh, 1619. We call ourselves the 1776 Unites America is a country of redemption. America is a country of, of second chances. And so if we, uh, in 1776, we believe that uh, America is defined by its promise. And the, and the Constitution uh, is a mechanism for us to be self-correcting. And America is the only nation on the face of the earth that fought a civil war to end slavery. What's the ultimate goal of the 1619 Project? It's a Marxist uh, goal, and that is to decimate this nation, to undermine it. And they are using, hijack the civil rights movement to do that. Why does the battle over history matter at all? It's because we, if you don't know where you've been, it's very difficult to determine where you're going. <laughs> So it is important to know where these foundational principles come from. It's most important to know. This battle is critical to our future. I don't think that we have, we have been this close to just anarchy. That you see that police, this assault on police is resulting in withdrawal from some of the most high crime areas as a result. Murder is, is soaring in some of these cities and is directly related to the nullification of policing. You have to understand they do not believe that America can be fixed. It can only be destroyed 
and on the rubble of our Judeo-Christian past, a new America can emerge that is free from racism, that is free from classism and sexism, and that is equal for everybody, and we all live happily ever after. I've exaggerated it a little bit, but not much. So the question is, what do you do with the freedoms of the Constitution? What do you do with our Christian history? And the answer is, it has to be destroyed. I believe in America, we are losing our freedom because we as Christians are afraid to speak up. And that's a dangerous. There is no reason for us to be afraid. America and, and American people brought Christ and freedom to people all over the world. It's time for us Americans to bring Christ and freedom back to America because there is no freedom. Now, even in America without Christ, real freedom is freedom in Christ. And we have to make sure that we stand up. If you tell a big enough lie and tell it frequently enough, it will be believed. Those words attributed to Joseph Goebbels based on the ideas of Adolf Hitler seem to ring true for us today. There are many out there today who are spreading lies and misinformation about the founders of our country. Many of them are in academia. They'll say that the founding fathers were nothing more than deists and that America was not built as a Christian nation. These people are seeking to destroy the Christian roots that this country was founded on by hiding the facts and distorting the truth. And we all suffer the repercussions. But if you want the truth about the founding fathers and their faith, all you have to do is look at the evidence. Here is Dr. D. James Kennedy with more from his classic message, The Biblical Basis for Our Constitution. Of the 55 men that met in Philadelphia for what has been called the miracle at Philadelphia, 50 of them were unquestionably Christians. Historians have researched their lives. Two possibly were, but they don't know enough about them. Only three could not reliably be called non-Christians. Over 20 of them were educated in theological seminaries. Does that sound like a group of pagans? Hardly at all. Let's look at some of the principles of the Constitution, biblical principles that many people don't realize. First of all, it was a government by law. There hadn't been countries that had a, a single constitution that included all of these things before. Some had bits and pieces here and there. So the first thing we notice is that there is governance by law and not by man. This was not something where the king was the law or where some individuals controlled the government. It was a government by law, and that's what they gave us in the Constitution. Many of these principles have been so distorted in our time that they're hardly understood today. Secondly, they gave us the principle that all men are created equal. They knew that the Bible said that God is not a respecter of persons. There were no nobility or lords or ladies. They were all the same. They were all citizens. Did you know that in England at this time they had a sort of democracy, but only about five or six percent of the men in England could vote because they just weren't equal enough to uh, be allowed that privilege. But America was distinctive in declaring that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator, said Jefferson, with inalienable rights. And the fact that we are all equal is a second principle that's taken from the Bible. And the fact that we have inalienable rights is the third. There were no inalienable rights in England, France, Germany, or anywhere else. 
but they were unique to this country and they were taken right from the Scriptures. The commandments of God guarantee our rights as being from God and being inalienable. For example, is your property really your own? Well, according to the Bible, we are commanded not to steal. This is a guarantee of private property. What about the sanctity of life and our right to life? It is guaranteed by the commandment that says, thou shalt not kill or thou shalt do no murder. Fourthly, it's based our constitution about the con upon the concept of liberty because the founders knew that the Bible said where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, that we're commanded stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. And when people had been made free from the shackles of sin by the spirit of Christ, they then began to want civil liberty as well and movements in that direction started everywhere. Fifth, they believe that man is sinful. James Madison, again, the writer of the Constitution, the principal one, said that there is a certain depravity about human beings that makes them not trustworthy and that we should keep our eye upon them. All of the other documents, humanistic documents everywhere, including the French Revolution, the Russian Revolution, all said that man was basically good and therefore they set out to create a utopia. But the founders of this country believe the Christian Bible that says that man is sinful and therefore there are certain things that follow. One was a division of power because too much power in the hands of one or two or a few people was very dangerous. Power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And they knew the scripture that we read today from Isaiah 33, for the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. Do you notice the tripartite division of our government there into the judiciary, the executive, the legislative branches? They're right there. All of that was done because the founders believed that we were sinful and that too much power could not be collected in the hands of too few. And so we see from one end to the other, the American Constitution is based upon principles that our founders took from the Bible. That's why Newsweek could say that historians are discovering that the Bible, more than the Constitution, is really the foundational document of American society. Well, my friends, we're in danger of losing much or most of that today. It's time for Christians to get informed, to get active, and to try to restore the great constitutional privileges that we have received. One caveat, ultimately our trust cannot be in the Constitution. It may be the greatest document ever to come from the mind of uninspired man. But the only doctrine, the only teachings that come from the inspired penman of Almighty God is the Word of God. This is infallible. <laughs> Did you ever think that unlike our Constitution, there is no process for amending this? It is perfect. It needs no amendments. It needs no Bill of Rights because it gives us whatever rights we have. It is the very Word of God, and that must ever be the foundation of our faith and our trust. But we can be thankful to God that men who believed precisely that took the principles of this Word and incorporated them into the greatest constitution that the world has ever seen, a constitution that is hated by many people in this country today who are doing everything in their power to dismantle it and remove all of its Christian values. And when they do that, I guarantee we will have no 
inalienable rights. And what the state gives, the state can take away. Lies and disinformation about the reality behind America's founding are the default setting in American education and media today. The 1619 Project, which reframes our settling and founding as the work of oppressive racists merely to further the interests of white men, won a Pulitzer Prize and is now being taught in our public schools. An entire generation and more of students has been trained to believe that our Constitution is purely a secular document and that the founders intended a complete separation of God and government. These falsehoods are separating us from the principles of our true history. And by doing so, they are radically transforming our nation. They are turning us from a nation of religious liberty and individual freedom into a nation of socialism, state control, and religious suppression. That's why recapturing our true history is absolutely vital. Dr. Peter Lilback, founder of Providence Forum, and our own Dr. Jerry Newcomb wrote a landmark book especially for that purpose. It's called George Washington's Sacred Fire. And we want to send it to you as our thanks for your generous donation to the ongoing work of this ministry. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Or call toll free, 877-962-7677. Or go online to djkm.org. Sacred Fire became the number one best selling nonfiction book in America when radio host Glenn Beck said every American should read it. If we learned our history in public schools or universities, we have been taught a false history. Today's revisionists portray the father of our country as a deist who cared little about religious matters and helped found a nation in which religion played only a peripheral role. But this simply could not be further from the truth. Discover in Sacred Fire how President Washington was not only a devout, practicing Trinitarian Christian, but one who believed that God's truth was the only possible foundation for a good and lasting nation. This groundbreaking, meticulously researched book is the definitive history of George Washington's religious views, views which help establish the freest, most prosperous republic in history. If we let those lessons be obscured from the historical record now, we risk losing our freedom forever. So please, contact us right away with your generous donation, and we will thank you by sending you the best-selling book, George Washington's Sacred Fire, written by Providence Forum founder Peter Lilback and its executive director, our own Jerry Newcomb. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Or call toll free, 877-962-7677. Or go online to djkm.org. In the words of our second president, John Adams, America is a government of laws and not of men. This famous principle has made our nation unique in world history, where liberty and individual freedom are protected and where no ruler is above the law. America's constitutional structure is not like the law of gravity that commands our obedience no matter what we do, believe, or think. Instead, our constitution is something that each generation must embrace and defend. Unless we understand, value, and protect 
the institutions and structures of our Constitution, they will become merely words on an old dusty page with no practical application to the reality of the modern world. Unfortunately, we entrusted that task to our educational system, which has utterly failed in its fiduciary duty of passing that inheritance on to our children. They should have been inculcated with the biblical basis for our system of government, a respect for the political genius of the founders who designed it, and an appreciation for how this design protects us today. But instead, they have been filled with a disdain for our history, a hatred of the supposedly oppressive evildoers of our founding, and a totalitarian spirit that wishes to overturn our nation and replace it with a politically correct nanny state, one that jails people for using insensitive pronouns. Listen, and I say this without fear of contradiction. America has no future unless you take control of the education of your children and grandchildren. Merely holding Christian beliefs and voting the right way is not enough. Do your children or grandchildren know the purpose of the separation of powers in our government and why it's crucial to preserving liberty in America? Do they understand how Congress has increasingly abdicated its proper legislative role to the courts and to an administrative bureaucracy that rules many aspects of our lives with no constitutional authority to do so? If not, then what is the future hope for our republic? In the words of President Ronald Reagan, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. D. James Kennedy Ministries is standing for truth and defending your freedom. I'm Frank Wright. Thanks for being with us. And here's a look at the next Truths That Transform. Think about this. The president of the U.S. had 89 million followers and Twitter just purged them, just knocked them off. And when speech is no longer free, that's a problem for all of society, and people need to realize that. I think right now there's a solid case to be made that we're losing on this front, and until there's some competition, we're gonna continue losing on this front. These companies are working hard against the conservatives and Christians who are the hope for the nation. That's next week. Today's program is available on DVD for your gift to this ministry of any amount. Please call, write, or log on to our website today. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.